Hey everybody, Thursday afternoon-ish here at Woodsmith for the shop update. We have a real nice episode for you today uh, with a special theme of very large projects on casters. We're going to get started with Mark's update on the project that he's been working on. And then Dylan and I have a little surprise at the end. I'm intrigued. Hey everyone, progress this week on the Dylan Baker Design Architects Cabinet. Um, as you see, turn around and I've got the main carcass done in this solid rift sawn white oak with some um, plywood dividers that are rift sawn MDF. So this guy is going to be heavy. So it's on some steel casters at the moment. Uh, the next step I've got to do is doing the drawers um, and this is the pile of more rift saw white oak for the drawers so I've got a lot of milling to do in the coming days to get that down to, to half inch for the, the drawer boxes. Okay so just focusing on some of the design aspects of this um, project as you see this has got a top that is um, able you to lift it up and down and adjust to different heights which incorporates um, two legs on each side. So these legs, if you go over here, fit inside this um, dovetailed recess, um, which I made a little test piece. This is not the finished product yet. This is just to test how well it operates. So if you can notice here, the dovetail is, um, the long side is facing outwards. So that will trap these legs in like so and able it to slide up and down nicely. And it's gonna have locating pin, pins um, in this part and then on the legs to adjust the different heights. Um, how I achieved this was um, quite a multiple step process. I'm back over here, I'll show you what I had set up for routers and templates. So this is the, the full size template that I used, um, which provides the, the shape that I need. So the first step was to use a plunge router to waste out the middle section, which is three eighths deep. So I used this and then it came back with another router to create the, uh, the dovetail. As you see the bearing will ride on the, on the template. So that was that um, part. So to create, back over here again, John, keep on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> Get getting your steps in today. So to create the, um, the other piece that goes in here, that was just done on the table saw with the blade tilted at the same angle as the dovetail bit, which is 14 degrees. And then for the top part, I found a, a taper bit that is also at 14 degrees and I can use a, a little template that goes on there to, for, the, for the bearing guide. So that creates this shape. I've got to put this shape on the end of here. Like I said, this was the test piece to see how well it slid up, slid up and down. Um, once they're in, I can work on the top and I think Dylan's gonna make it so it tilts forward, correct? Just at a slight angle. And then it's gonna be laminated with some black laminate. So check in next week and it's gonna be a lot heavier. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey everybody. Well, my latest project is this clamp table designed by John. It uh, serves a couple purposes, gives you a real sturdy work surface. You can stick your clamps in here. We've got three quarter inch holes for bench dogs. We have three drawers. We have a, a door uh, for larger storage and they all have that blue motion hinges and drawer slides. And on this side, we've got more storage, drill storage. You got a shelf in here. We can hang our clamps, probably glue bottles. 
and more clamp storage on this side. So it's all Baltic birch. And is it heavy? So you can do a lot of work on this. So that's it. All right, thanks. Thanks. All right, yeah, I suppose we'll go with me and then finish up with Bill. So one of the many projects that are going on right now, uh, I've started building the shop coffee bar. Um, this will be going in the next issue of Woodsmith. Um, it is a weekend project. Um, something that we do off around here other than design and build and make videos is drink a lot of coffee. And so we thought that this would be a, an appropriate project for not only us, for other people that spend a lot of time in their shop. So construction on this is all three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. Um, it's a rather simple form. Um, we've got the taller uprights here are just laminated to the two uh, lower sides, or I guess the lower cabinet. Um, joiner on this is all pocket screws. Um, so there are a lot of, a lot of one, one inch and one and a quarter inch pocket screws holding this all together, which makes it really quick for assembly. Um, with the exception of the top door, I had most of this done in a couple hours last Friday, which was really nice. Um, some other things that are going on with this is up top here, you'll notice there is a door that will flip up. I just have some traditional Euro hinges up there. Um, and then to keep those up, I got these gas struts. I've wanted to use these on a project for a while and um, I tried to integrate them into a, um, a finishing cabinet we did maybe last year, the year before that, and they just didn't end up working out. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use these for this uh, upper door here to prop it open. Um, on the surface here, this will be kind of like your work surface or prep surface. You know, if you want to put your coffee maker over here and supplies, whether you've got, you know, whole beans or grounds, again, let your imagination run wild. But again, we just want to have this be kind of like the open or preparation area. And then down below, uh, the two cavities are up, up here. Uh, there will be a microwave and then a mini fridge down below. And then the door uh, will actually cover that. And so it'll have the same cutout for the handle um, and then use the same hinges to open the door. Um, a couple other things that will be going on with this that you can't see now, the finish. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the faces of the plywood, leaving the edge exposed. Um, I just really like, again, the, the aesthetic of the, the laminated uh, plywood there. Uh, the top here and the door fronts will have a black micro dot laminate, so there'll be a little bit of a texture to it. Um, and then the back is just a quarter inch piece of plywood. So this time next week, of course, it will be done so we can take a look at that. Another project that Phil and I have both kind of been working on, I believe, and he can back me up on this, or uh, again, if it's, I'm not telling the full story, was this a gift? No, I picked that up last year sometime. Okay. So this is a book that Phil picked up. Um, there are 24 designs in here, and I believe they're all based off of designs from like a 1940s or 50s, like Japanese design group. Um, and so I don't know if they really changed the joinery a lot. It looks like the projects all look the same, but again, it's just kind of a, a revision of some of these older designs. But the cool thing about this is not only are the designs modern and kind of just timeless in design, they're very, very easy to put together. So, you know, we're talking about uh, weekend projects. Um, the, all the joinery on here are either put together with nails, uh, cut nails or screws, um, dealer's choice on that, I think. Um, and then just made out of dimensional lumber. Um, so Phil had a project that he wanted to build uh, out of this, and I came across this. This is sitting on his desk while he was out last week, and I've been working on some home projects, uh, added some stairs to my deck, and of course I need some deck furniture too. We've got a lot of plants outside that um, we're kind of running out of real estate for. Um, but there was a leftover bunch of leftover uh oak that logan had brought in for a project that you guys or we did for a t the tv show um there are a lot of knots and checking in it so it's a lot of cutting around stuff but there was a surplus of it and so i figured i'd just kind of get after it and integrate it into this project since it was going to live outside and it kind of just feeds into the aesthetic i was going for so i haven't made it terribly far i've got a majority of the pieces cut out um uh, I think I'm going to use some of the smaller trim screws with have a really small head on them. Uh, 
to connect all my pieces. I think Phil did something a little different or did a combination of things, but uh, yeah, I think sometime again next week we'll be able to take a look at this and the other project I'm working on and whatever else too. So, but that said, I think we'll go ahead and talk to Phil. And... So the project that I've been working on from this book, kind of Woodsmith Book Club, I guess, is a stool. Most of the projects in this book were made out of Japanese materials that were available in the post-war era. So it was a lot of cypress, which is a softwood that's very similar to Western red cedar. I went with uh, some white pine that I had gotten from Logan and I made this version with a few changes that I made because I just can't leave stuff well enough alone apparently. So the first change was to use a router jig and did these really big finger joints on it. It's a router jig that I've shown and we showed on the TV show. It's really easy to use and gives you really nice tight fitting joints right from the jig. Uh, the, there's two sets of cross braces that allow, that provide stability and rigidity to this project. So these wide ones here are attached with wood screws and then I plug those. I still need to do some surface cleanup here. The ones that are on edge or flat, I attach those with cut nails and some glue. And then where they meet, I glued that joint and then used cut nails as well to support that. Uh, so what's left on this one is, like I said, just to clean up the leftover, you know, glue drips and that kind of thing, ease the edges, and then I'll put some kind of finish on it. I haven't really decided exactly what I'm going to do for a finish here, uh, but I just thought it was a really cool project. The nice thing about it is that it is kind of two layers or two levels. So you have this in the tall form and then you just rotate it 90 degrees and you get sh a shorter stool. Um, even though this is white pine and it's super lightweight, uh, it's really strong. I'm really impressed with how it went together and how those pieces overlapping and connecting in different places really created a, not only an interesting piece to look at, but really strong and functional as well. So anyway, that's what we have going on here for the shop update this week. If you have any questions, comments, or smart remarks, you can leave those in the comments section below, and we'll see you next week, everybody. Bye.